Yes, it's okay. Hello, hi everyone. My name is Daniel Vicente. I'm head of apps and gaming at La Liga, and I'm accompanied by Priya Narasiman, CEO on Skinscam. And uh, we have a bowl. <laughs> we have a bowl. I will leave it here until the end of the presentation, but in case you like the presentation, please give us a big applause at the end and we will share with you. We just have one because it was impossible to bring 100 bowls, but hopefully one will be happy. Hope you enjoy. And uh, today we are here to share the Clava Platform project. What is the Clava Platform project? It's a product that allows La Liga clubs to deliver their own official app. And how it works? There are three main parties involved. One is Jinscamp as a technical developer of the company. The second is La Liga managing and coordinating the project. And the third one are the clubs. And what's the main role of the clubs? The main role of the clubs is taking care of their fans. That's all we wanted to reach with this project, that they don't care about technical problems, coordination, budgets, they just take care of their fans, what is their main goal and what they know to do. And uh, why we started this project? It started in 2017. We did an analysis of the situation of our clubs and only 15 clubs had an official app at the time. And uh, at the average of the ratings were 3.8. So the apps were not very valuable for the users. And only two apps had more than 5 million downloads, obviously, Real Madrid and Barcelona. But to give you some data to compare, La Liga official app, only this product at the time had more than 15 million downloads. So we had some experience on delivering apps and games, and uh, we believed that we could help our clubs. So we pushed this project forward. And, uh, as it's my first time in, uh, in Lisbon sharing the strategy, so if you agree, I will spend two minutes on sharing what, what's my job, what we do in La Liga, and then we will come back to the platform. La Liga Apps and Gaming Strategy has three main pillars. The first one is represented by this image. We call it ecosystem, and we have decided to deliver as many products as we need to maximize the audience we reach and the engagement we get with our users. You will see how many products do we have. The second pillar is represented by this slogan, the game is just the beginning, and that means that our focus is in the non-90 minutes of the match, but the rest of the time. And I think this is very well explained by this graphic. The blue line is the official app, and as you can see, it goes up during the weekend and goes down during the week. And that is because it's related to the live matches. Instead, the two games, the two red lines, Head Soccer and Fantasy, as you can see, they are much more stable during the week. So they allow us to engage our users during long time, more time, during the week, during the season, and during the summer too. And the third one is that we are focused on young people. We are focused on the fans, La Liga fans of the future. And which product do we, do we have? Quick overview. We have an official app, schedule and results, very fast and simple, uh, information in a very fast and easy way. We have a fantasy game, for sure the most important game we have in La Liga, and it's very important because of this screen you can see here. What you can see there is different players from different teams. For winning in your fantasy and, and win your friends, you need to know every player of La Liga. So not only Real Madrid and Barcelona players, but you need to watch different matches and you need to follow the full competition. And that for La Liga means creating new brands, player brands, club brands, and increasing the live matches watched per match day. We have an OTT platform, it's called La Liga Sports TV. We launched it last August, and uh, now it's the Spanish sports OTT, but uh, it's gonna become very important for the audiovisual strategy in the future. We have done some innovations. 
And uh, maybe the most representative is the, the assistant, the voice assistant project. We have a betting app. Uh, this, is, this game is called La Quiniela, and it's a traditional pen and paper game. What we try to do is to transform this to, through digital, so now you can bet through the app. Head Soccer, the most successful game we have in La Liga. More than 60 million downloads, and 95% of these downloads comes from abroad Spain. So it's very important with this project we realized that we could get massive audiences all over the world. It's the first approach for many La Liga fans to La Liga and the, ba the base of the strategy. If we didn't have this successful with this game, probably the, the gaming strategy will not exist in La Liga, but this changes everything. We have Tiny Striker, it's a free kick game. We have an educational game for kids between four and 11 years old. It's a very kid-friendly game, uh, no monetization at all or very few. And what we want is that kids learn some skills but through their favorite teams. The opposite is Top Cards. It's the first game we have launched to earn money. There is a big e economy behind, and hopefully we will do a lot of money with this in Asian markets mainly. We launched it last month, so we don't have results for the moment. And uh, a big part of my, my work is digital business development, and the best example is La Liga Esports. We have launched, or we have created a national esports tournament uh, based on FIFA 19 game, and uh, this is becoming huge. And uh, with all these products, we have achieved some goals. And today we can say that we are the third league in the world in the ranking of downloads. We have 99.8 million downloads, so Next week, we will celebrate the 100 million downloads, and uh, we are very proud of that. Thanks to my team for that. But let's come back to the Club App platform. We have done a study at the beginning. We have said only 15 clubs. Then we have built a strategy, and the, these are the basics of the strategy. First of all, we wanted to provide club service. We wanted to help our clubs on their digitalization, on their road to become mobile. We wanted to deliver an international product. The, the products, the apps, are delivered globally, but Priya will share some key aspects about this internationalization. Business, we wanted to provide our clubs a tool that allows them to do some business. Now, they, they have new sponsorship assets, advertising assets. They can sell tickets. They can sell t-shirts. So some business around. In La Liga, we have different type of clubs. We have small clubs. We have medium clubs. And we have very big clubs. So the project needed to allow every club to go their own speed. So some clubs uh, manage the, the platform in a very simple uh, way, but some others want to go super fast. And customization was very important, and the platform helped us on this. And uh, for sure, the most important fan knowledge, business intelligence, and business analytics is key aspect on the strategy. Now the clubs can understand much, much better to their fans, you will see. But also La Liga gets the, this data from every club. In an aggregate mode, we can share back to the rest of the clubs, and uh, we can take common decision. We can learn one from each other and grow all together. After defining the strategy, we have built a briefing. This is a very big and deep document, very long, but these are the main functionalities we requested. We have done a tender, so we invited 14 companies all over the world. We received uh, 14 proposals, and we evaluated that in this big blocks, budget, the price, obviously, very important, the technology behind the product, 
for the users and the service they could provide to La Liga and uh, to their clubs. And uh, there was a company that won on every aspect. This was Jenscam, so it's time to give the floor to Priya Narasiman. Please, Priya, so was your product. Thank you. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> thank you. Um, thank you so much, Danny, and uh, thank you to La Liga for all the collaboration, and thank you to um, all the La Liga clubs as well. Um, what you see is the result of everyone putting their ideas in, so the credit is not for us alone. It's for all the clubs and for Danny and his team and all the things that they have um, brought as ideas to really push the platform forward. Um, so that's Ian's cam. A little bit about my background, just so you know where I come from. I was born in India. I was uh, raised in Zambia. I finished my high school there. Um, I went to the United States to do my PhD in electrical and computer engineering, so I'm a professor. Um, actually, so I went to become a professor at uh, Carnegie Mellon in computer engineering. That's really what my background is. Um, I was a director of Intel Labs um, in Pittsburgh, so really leading a research and uh, development division. Um, and then uh, this is my third company. I have done a nonprofit company for blind people as well. Uh, this is my third company. I work on sports now. That's Yinscam. I still do research. Um, I'm a professor. I still do research. So there you see on the bottom right-hand corner, that's one of my little robots. He's wearing a hoodie, so um, you know, I still do research. Um, how the platform got started, so as I said, I'm a professor by training. The company is 10 years old. So how did we get started 13 years ago? I, I was not a fan of many sports in the United States. I grew up on rugby and football in Africa, cricket in India, and I didn't get many of those sports in the United States until I went to my first live hockey game and I felt that I had fallen in love. I like the sport, I like how fast it moves, I'm a different person when I watch live hockey. Uh, and I really like that. So I would go to a lot of games and if you know how much professors get paid, our salary is not that big. So that is the seat I used to get. Uh, and you have met me, everybody else is taller than I am. So I would never see anything when it counted. I wanted something for myself. So I started this 13 years ago as a research project, working with a bunch of students to say, how can we bring fans closer to the game and bring all the video content to them? All the red stars you see are all the video angles, and we wanted to let fans control the video they saw while they were sitting in their seats. So that's really how we started the company. So what about the work we do with La Liga? So Danny just showed um, you know, the tender and all the features. The number one thing, I think, beyond everything that we saw in that La Liga tender was personalization, personalization, personalization. It's in the league app, it's in the club apps, and the reason for that is 10 years ago, you could build a mobile app, and you could build the same mobile app for every human being, and everyone was okay with that. Today, you cannot do that anymore. You have to build a mobile app that becomes personal to the fan, personal to their preferences. And the number one thing we saw throughout in that tender was personalization. So that became, honestly, the vision for what we wanted. How could we have a personalized experience for the fan, right? How could we do something better for the club or the team? What does personalization mean for the team? And then finally, for the stadium. What does personalization mean for the stadium? So you, you can't forget any one of these three different pieces, so we had to think about all three of them. This is our client roster. So um, as Danny mentioned, we work with a number of La Liga clubs, but over the last 10 years, um, we've been working with about 180 different clubs. Um, a number of them are in the United States, Australia and New Zealand, um, in the NFL, in the NBA, and also with Australian Rules Football, the National Rugby League, Netball, and also the All Blacks, which is a you know, famous rugby uh, team in um, New Zealand. So we work with a number of teams there. We have a number of sports partners and designations, notably the one with La Liga as a result of the tender, uh, which is something we're really proud of. Um, so that's one of our um, special designations as well. So numbers, let's look a little bit at our numbers, right? So our numbers, the numbers I am proud of are the top two numbers. 31.7 billion user action records. So 31.7 billion records of fans who have used the app in different ways 
and in different signatures of activity. They open up the app, they look at the match center, they play a video, they listen to the radio, they do different things. That helps with personalization. Push notifications. We have sent close to 30 billion push notifications, which means 30 billion times we have annoyed a fan on their phone. Right? So those two numbers I'm proud of because they show the scale of the systems we have and the kind of data we have for personalization. ROI. The number one thing in this industry, as all of you know, is to make sure that we can drive return on investment for our clubs, for La Liga, for all the people we work with. Just a few numbers to give you a sense of what we have done, right? For some of our clubs in the United States, we drive something like $180,000 per game for mobile ticketing. Um, for uh, some of our clubs, again, uh, for mobile auctions, which means you are able to sell experiences, sell merchandise, we've driven about $109,000 in revenue. So we've got several examples. These are just a few of them. More importantly, that second list, we've driven ways to increase club membership, club membership revenue, and those are all the studies that I know from a La Liga standpoint was something really valuable for them in how we actually use data to drive revenue. So a La Liga league app, uh, Danny told you quite a bit about it, but, and one of the things that really makes it special, personalization. Let's go back to personalization again. Favorite team, favorite player, and wait for it, favorite language. The La Liga app supports 15 languages and growing. So if, you, if we say 15 today, next year it's probably more. And, um, and the whole goal is, again, as a league app, you're trying to serve multiple clubs. And some fans may be fans of clubs, but some fans actually are fans of players. And fans want to consume content in their own language, right? Which is, I think, also important, right? So I'll just play the video quickly. And by the way, the video is short because we encourage all of you to download the La Liga League app <laughs> while you're in the room. Danny will thank big, you. Big pick today. Big pick today. <laughs> Danny will thank you for that. So, uh, so anyhow, just a few screens of that, just so you can see what it looks like, and you can see different experiences, different kinds of personalization, different content, etc. Okay. So club apps. Let's talk about club apps. Danny talked about the tender for club apps, and Danny mentioned something. He said clubs come in different shapes and sizes. You have the clubs that have a lot of staffing. And then you have a clubs that one person runs the video board, does social, does content, does everything, and does IT. So you have clubs at two extremes. So it's not fair to throw an app at them and expect all of them to find content to put in there. So one of the things that Tender really encouraged was let's build, uh, let's build different apps to cater to different clubs with different types of resources. Okay, so going back again, personalization for the team, right? You want to think about what the club can do and not put too much of a burden on them, and that was really, really important. So we ended up with three different templates, and you can see for the clubs, even the club apps have multiple languages that are supported, English, Spanish, Catalan, and Basque. So fans are able to consume content and push notifications in the language they like, which I think is really, really fundamentally important. Just a few screens again of the apps. And again, if you want to see more, please download the apps. Right? So you can see, um, again, personalization. You're asked where you live, who are your favorite players, so that the app can basically transform to suit your preferences as a fan. Right? And again, you can see some of the screens and how the media hub is organized, match center, you know, just all of the different statistics, et cetera. Um, and the ability, again, to see some of the statistics head-to-head -head with the, the clubs that are playing. Um, and again, again, you can see favorite players, push notifications. The clubs do push notifications for automated scores, so you can do push notifications for lineups um, when you have penalties, etc. but also push notifications for news and other things as well. So the clubs do that all the time. Okay, so next. And by the way, I'm using Legos there very deliberately. Intentionally, I'm putting Legos up there. The way the platform is constructed, and one of the things that was important, again, from the tender, the word modular. The mo word modular was in the tender, which meant you want to be able to take things and move them around. You want to be able to take things and assemble them how you want. That's how our platform is built. Okay, so I'll explain a little bit more. Our platform consists of these things called cards. A card, think of it as a simple block. 
you can take the card and move it wherever you want in the app. The card is video, photos, statistics, match center, advertisement, anything. It's just a card. You can put the card on the home screen. You can take it. You can move it somewhere here. You can bring it down here. We give you a tool, a dashboard, where you can move the card around. Now, that's not even the most important part, and there are a couple of videos. By the way, this is the same club. One is a stadium version, and one ends up being the team version. This is for the Brooklyn Nets and the Barclays Center. So you can see the same set of cards. You can get two different kinds of apps, same cards, right? Which it really means when you go to the stadium for a concert, you can see different cards. You go there for a Brooklyn Nets game, you see different cards, right? So you're able to personalize down to the event that you're in. Here are some cards. And again, you looked at Danny's last slide where he listed all the features they wanted in the tender. All those features are cards, right? All those features basically become the cards, right? And then let's talk about how we put the cards together. If there is one picture that is important in my entire talk, it's this one. Let me explain this. We take all the cards, right? You have cards for content. You have cards for stadium. Sorry about the way that is split up. Payment, personalization. You take all the cards. Now you give them properties. You say, I want this card to appear only at this time. This card must appear only in the stadium. This card must appear only if your language is Spanish. This card must appear only if you're a member. This card must appear only if you're on a Samsung device. And this card must appear only if you have iOS 13. Right? You can go down that deep, which means you can take all these properties and build a custom app for a fan who is on the couch, sitting at home, doesn't show up to the stadium, and that app will look different from the fan who's a season ticket member, shows up at the stadium, and they want to consume different content. They want to buy tickets, they want to do different things. Same infrastructure, same platform, two different kinds of users. Now. Think of multiple different kinds of users. A lot of our teams have maybe a dozen different kinds of segments and users, and they've created a dozen different apps out of the same app, which is really the most important thing. Okay. A bunch of cards, just to show you something different. You've seen the La Liga cards. These are some of our NBA team cards. So you can see what they look like. And again, the goal is by day, by time, by pregame, in-game, post-game, in stadium, out of stadium, in market, international, out of the same platform, you build different apps. It's still one app, but they look like different apps. And that is fundamental to personalization. Okay. Again, look at all these. These are all just cards again, right? Some of our teams have cards that look like this, and that's their ticketing card. Some of these have a thinner cards. Um, so this happens to be the Madison Square Garden app. You can see they have cards that look like this. So again, different teams have different kinds of cards, but everything in our universe is a card. And you can move the cards around, and you can make them appear and disappear used based on the properties, which is really, really the fundamental thing. right? So that answered the modular requirement and the personalization requirement that Danny had in the tender. Modular, personalized. That was really, 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 really important to them. Right? So again, that's what helped us to answer those questions. Now, the other thing that they wanted was the ability to identify the fan and the ability to personalize once you identify who the fan is. This, we create what we call locked cards. So if you tap on a card, you have to log in before you can access the card. So same concept, but now you have registration-only cards that only members can access. Right? So buy tickets might be behind a registration. Renew your membership might be behind a registration. So now you can personalize even one step further. So again, lock cards. That answers another requirement that they had for the tender. Okay? Then finally, the overall requirement for the tender was make sure we can do all this without an app update. <laughs> right? And that was very important in the tender because most clubs will not like it if you're doing an app update every week for a new feature they want. So we built basically this dashboard where you can add and remove cards, move them around, give them different properties, make them appear and disappear inside the stadium. You can do all that without an app update. Okay, And that was really fundamental. If we couldn't do this, we cannot support 21 club apps or more club apps. It's just not possible. You cannot scale that big if you're not able to do all this without an app update.
that was really fundamental for us, okay? All right, so to show you a couple more examples maybe of membership and personalization, I'm going to go look at some of the examples from some of our clubs overseas in the United States and just show you some very quick examples and then turn it over to Danny. Membership personalization. Let me show you how these cards work for membership and personalization. This is the Seattle Seahawks, right? So in the Seattle Seahawks, uh, sorry I went through that quickly, you can pick in the app whether you are a season ticket member, a club seat holder, a home market fan, a national fan, an international fan. If you are an international fan, you will see these cards. If you are a season ticket member, you will see these cards. So you can see a season ticket member is told to manage tickets and buy food. An international fan is told to buy live video because they're very different, right? So different cards for different fans which is really, really fundamental, right? Here's another example with the Cleveland Cavaliers. It's now, in this case, we take it one step further. We are giving you different cards based on how much money you spend with the club, right? So I'll give you an example. The more games you attend, the more money you spend with the club. If you attend 20 games, you're spending more money than if you attend three games. So the Cavaliers have a different way of analyzing their fan base. There are fans who may have attended only one game the whole season, and then there are fans who attend 80% of games. They are treated differently in the app. We actually segment them differently. So here is a fan who is somebody we call a legend, which means that fan has attended 80% of games in the season. So what does that fan get? The fan gets a mobile wallet. We have a mobile wallet where you can manage discounts, you can use it for payment. That fan gets unique virtual reality 360 videos. Other fans don't get that. That fan gets seat upgrades. Other fans don't get that. And then finally, that fan gets discounts even when they go change the tires on their car. Because Goodyear happens to be a partner of the Cavaliers, so even when you go change tires on the car, you get a discount, right? So mobile wallet, transactions, content, video, seat upgrades, playoff tickets, all of those things manage because the more you spend, the more you get back from the team. Okay, so now you're segmenting even by spend. So again, you're getting into deeper and deeper personalization, and you are going to see a lot of these use cases come to life for La Liga clubs. We're working with clubs to try to see if we can bring some of these cases for them as well. One of my favorite examples is this one, and I'll explain. This one is also both by spend and seating section. The Chicago Bulls, segment by the section of the stadium you sit in. It's basketball, right? So if you are next to the court, those seats are much more expensive than if you're sitting up there. So the fans who sit courtside get a completely different set of benefits inside the app as compared to the fan who sits up there, right? So if you are sitting next to the court, you're going to get gift certificates, you're going to get discounts, you're going to get special offers. Let's take it one step further. All the fans who attend, say, eight games in a row, say you're a fan, you attend eight games in a row, we put you into a special segment called a golden ticket. This is absolutely awesome. I can't take credit for this. The Chicago Bulls came up with this idea. So you, eight games in a row, you put them into a golden ticket segment. We pick one of those fans who may have attended eight games, and then in their app, dynamically, no app update, we drop in a golden ticket card. That card says, for this game, you get to sit next to the court, right? Everybody talks about surprise and delight and all these things for fans. This actually does it. You attend eight games, guess what? The ninth game, you just might sit next to the players, right? And we can do this dynamically without an app update. It'll just appear and disappear. If in 15 minutes, you don't take advantage of it, it goes away, we pick the next person, right? It forces fans to use the app. Again, personalization, 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 right? And in this case, driving revenue for the club as well, okay? All of this works only because there's a single sign-on and identity system, and again, we've integrated with La Liga's analytics and their identity system, which means we can segment as well. We can segment push notifications for members, club seat holders, somebody who likes his favorite player, somebody who likes video a lot, somebody who goes to the stadium a lot. They can all get different kinds of push notifications. And again, you can collect quite a bit of data. I'm sorry, let's go back to that slide. You can collect quite a bit of data and get a really deep understanding of the fan, 
right? So as you get all these data sources, you can actually unify this to get a deep understanding of the fan, and that really drives you know, prospects and membership for a lot of our clubs. Um, I'll talk a little bit about revenue. I talked about personalization. I'm going to switch gears slightly. And in the next five minutes, I'll talk about revenue and then turn it over to Danny. So what have we done for revenue for our clubs? We've talked about personalization. Let's switch and talk about revenue. Mobile ordering. I mentioned we already have a mobile wallet. We let our clubs manage discounts and paying through their apps. Mobile ordering, a lot of our clubs use mobile ordering where you can order food and beverage or merchandise directly from the app and manage that directly in the app. Okay? We also have different things for augmented reality, and I'll show you a few examples and then I'll stop. So why is this revenue generation? Well, it drives the fan to use the app, and then you can go talk to a sponsor and try to sell these things to the sponsor. So everything I'll show you here has been sponsored by somebody for that club. The club made revenue from this, which is really important, right? So let's start with something really simple. We have all seen filters, face filters, right? These are ones that we've done, and you're going to see La Liga clubs, club apps, have face filters in them uh, starting this season. Those are going to start being there in La Liga club apps. Interactive games. You want to be able to get fans to play with each other, right? And basically to play a social game together. This is for basketball, but we're in the process of doing things like this for soccer. So I'll explain what this is. Watch the right-hand side. Watch that video. So you'll see here, as we detect the club logo, we create a basketball hoop so you can use your phone and shoot baskets at it. OK, simple game. Let's start with something really simple. One person can play that. You can get all your badges in Apple Game Center, Google Game Center. Simple idea. Let's take this one step up. Get two fans to play against each other. This is for the Cleveland Cavaliers. Watch the two people play against each other. And we are keeping track of their scores, right? Watch the other guy. The other guy's the most fun. He's just going. <laughs> Right? So they can compete against each other. Okay? So, second, let's take this one step further. Four sections of the stadium competing against each other. Okay? So, here's what we're doing. This section is shooting baskets at the video board. That section, that section, that section. We add up the points in each section, and the section that wins the most baskets gets some kind of prize. So, watch the left hand side. This is what it looks like to a fan. So watch the left-hand side, and then we'll switch over to the right-hand side. So there's a fan. You scan that. You enter. And this is a fan sitting in the stadium, in the stands. So they hold this up on the video board. They have a virtual basketball hoop, and now they can shoot baskets from their seat. We add up all the totals across all the four sections, and the section that makes the most points gets something special at halftime. OK? So this was done for the Cleveland Cavaliers three years ago for playoffs. You'll see the promotion for playoffs as they were doing it for playoffs. I won't take you through the whole video, but you'll see how they actually did this with fans. Okay? So again, you can see head-to-head -head competition, competing across stadiums, or a fan can play alone by themselves as well. As well. Let's look at other examples. Membership. This is what we did with one of our clubs in Australia, where as part of renewing their membership, fans, the coach thanked the fans for becoming a member. So I'll let you watch this. So if you can look at this on the right-hand side, you get, get your membership card at home. Before you renew, the coach thanks you. So let's watch this. Hi there, it's Clarko. Thanks for being such a valued member of our great footy club. Uh, we're super excited about you being a member in 2019 and look forward to trying to win some silverware for the Hawks in the years to come. Jody, yes. we want to do this with President Tevas. <laughs> what do you think? Okay. Okay. <laughs> and this is, again, a personalized message. It can be your favorite player shows up out of the membership card and says, thank you for being a supporter last season. We look forward to next season. Okay. Let's look at another one. This is the game program, right? You get these game program, these books. A lot of our teams, you use that, you scan that with your mobile app, and now you can have interesting experiences. 
So this is for the Oklahoma City Thunder. They traded that player, so ignore that for a minute. But see, you can use the souvenir cup. So you can scan each of those and you get the hype video, right? So basically the video plays. Okay, so here's another one. This is for an English Premier League club, the Wolves. So this is actually a really interesting idea. See this? This is just a sticker, a giant sticker on a wall. Inside a shopping, inside a, a shopping mall, a giant sticker on a wall. That's all it is. Using the Wolves app, and watch the right-hand side now. I'm sorry about that. Let's go back and see if we can play that. Can we try playing the video? See if I can play it. Oh, it just goes away. If we can try playing the video of the folks at the back. Okay, all right, so I guess the video wasn't embedded. So um, what I'll try to do is to show you. So what happens is, let's, let's actually go back and look at this. A fan will stand in front of this, even in the shopping mall, and as they stand and hold their phone up, you can actually start shooting penalty kicks at the wall through your app and earn points, right? And that means you can use all of these as activation zones you know, throughout the city as well. So that's a really great example. Here's another one. This is for the Hawks. So you'll see in this case, it's again an interactive game where you can try to shoot field goals. And then again, there's a grand prize you can win for the most number of field goals that you've kicked. So we build all the graphics, the engagement, the login, the registration, all of those things. Okay. Here's a man of the match. And again, all of these end up being sponsorship-related features, right? You use all these to drive engagement, and all of these can really get fans using the app more. Okay. Again, another example of a field goal kicking game, and this is something that uh, one of our clubs also in the US does. So again, you can see different kinds of challenge games, different kinds of augmented reality experiences, all of those different things that we can do um, across the range of all of our clubs. So again, you can see that. And I'm gonna turn it over to Danny so you can talk a little bit about um, looking ahead here. Okay, so some final thoughts before ending the presentation. At the beginning, we have shared the situation of the clubs in 2017, but what's the situation now today? We have 37 clubs with official app versus 15. These are the clubs in the platform. These are the clubs that have their own app. The rating has increased until 4.7, so people, fans love the apps, and we are very happy for that. But uh, if I would be forced to define this project in only one word, for sure I will use easy. This project, complex project, has been surprisingly easy, and that's all about you, Priya, and your company. So thank you so much for helping us and helping the class on this. And thank you so much for listening. I hope you enjoy. If you have any questions. Okay. okay, big applause. <laughs> I'll launch the ball. I'm launching the ball. Okay, take care, eh? It's going, it's coming. <laughs>